Welcome back to Morning Joe. Joining us now from Boston, member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Democratic Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts. Senator, good to see you always. Um, you called yesterday the fire and fury comments from President Trump reckless. You wanted to explain why it's so dangerous. Um, what would you prefer to see? I think we all agree that the North Korean situation has the potential to, to be a crisis, a nuclear crisis at that. What should be the approach of not only President Trump, but the Defense Secretary Jim Mattis and others? Well, I think first they have to stop the reckless, dangerous, scary uh, language which they are using. When Secretary Mattis says that, um, that if North Korea doesn't uh, uh, stop, that it could lead to the destruction of its people, it could lead to regime change, uh, that's exactly what they're most concerned about and will most likely lead to them continuing to test uh, nuclear weapons and an ICBM uh, capacity. Uh, th this good cop, bad cop that uh, Tillerson, uh, uh, Tillerson and Mattis are playing along with the president, it really comes off more like keystone cops. There's no coherent strategy, which should include urgent diplomacy with even tight, uh, ever tightening sanctions around North Korea, much tougher even than the United Nations uh, passed. Uh, Senator Cory Gardner and I from Colorado have introduced legislation uh, that would cut off uh, any trade that was coming into uh, North Korea at all and sanction a country, including China, if they were engaging in any kind of a trade. And, and we need, as a result, uh, to have negotiations, sanctions, conversations with China, which is where 80 percent of all the trade for North Korea emanates, uh, and begin it right now rather than seeing this very dangerous escalatory uh, language, which could, through miscalculation, actually lead uh, to a conventional showdown that could escalate into uh, a nuclear event that uh, would absolutely be catastrophic. So, Senator, what are the odds of this uh, sensible approach, this uh, diplomatic approach occurring, uh, given the context of what we know to be occurring in Washington? You have a State Department that is pretty much stripped of personnel, assistant secretaries, ambassadorships, a secretary of state who have been led to believe anecdotally uh, doesn't have a lot of contact with the president of the United States. You have a uh, a, a very principled defense secretary, a very principled uh, national security advisor and General McMaster. You've got General Kelly as chief of staff, and yet you have the president saying what he says. How do we put together a diplomatic team under these conditions? I don't know how we can do it, Mike. Back in 1962, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, it was the generals who were saying that we should move to a military re response. It was a cool, calm, detached President Kennedy who kept stepping back to analyze uh, the options to ensure that we did not, in fact, escalate into a nuclear confrontation. Here, we have just the opposite. We're hoping that the generals around the president control the president. And even with that, General Mattis is talking about the destruction of the people of North Korea. Totally. So it's a very dangerous situation. Uh, uh, this is the warning that uh, Barbara Tuckman had in the guns of August that uh, President Kennedy asked uh, 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 all of his generals and advisors to read. He was so concerned that through miscalculation, uh, an accidental war could begin. Uh, mm -hmm. But we don't see any of that. Uh, inside of the Trump White House, led by the president himself. Senator Sam Stein here. I want to talk about your legislation, uh, and I have two questions. Uh, one, describe uh, for the viewers' uh, edification here what the uh, chain of command is when a president orders a nuclear weapon strike. Are there any checks and balances? And then secondly, I know your legislation is designed to introduce uh, or to prohibit a first strike capability for a president. In the wake of Trump's uh, comments, have you seen any um, renewed interest or new interest among your colleagues in the Senate or perhaps in the House for Ted Lieu uh, in co-sponsoring this bill? Yeah, my concern is that uh, 
right now, the language that is coming out of the White House would leave the impression that nuclear weapons are usable. And they're usable even if the United States is not attacked by nuclear weapons. Uh, that is completely unacceptable. Uh, and so what my legislation says is that uh, if the United States is in a conventional weapon conflict with another country, nuclear weapons are not permitted to be used unless the United States Congress authorizes the president to do so. Now, in the event of a nuclear attack against the United States, it would be different. But in a conventional setting, they would not be permitted. So that is my concern. And yes, we have other members of the House and Senate who are co-sponsoring this legislation. Uh, this goes to the role which uh, the Congress constitutionally should play uh, in the declaration of war. We've allowed uh, for the power with regard to conventional war to slip away from us, unfortunately. But with, re with regard to the use of nuclear weapons, where we have not been attacked, with nuclear weapons, it would be a strange Lovian world that we would enter, uh, that a president would be allowed uh, to use nuclear weapons, uh, unleashing a, a fury, a power that has never been seen in the history of the planet in response to threats from another country, in response to conventional weapons movement by another country. It would just be catastrophic for the planet, and that's why I believe we need constraints on the use of nuclear weapons. All right, Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, who sits on Foreign Relations Center. Thanks so much, as always. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.